Well, dear friends, good to be back with you from here in sunny, beautiful Chesapeake, Virginia, and continuing on our series of personal evangelism. And this would be session number four. And if you haven't uh, listened to the first three sessions, I encourage you to do so. They're all on YouTube. And uh, if you look for uh, my name, Roy Olson, and there are other Roy Olsons there, but uh, you'll find me. And it'll be under Personal Evangelism, session number four. If what we believe is true, and it is, then everybody who has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ through faith in Him, through believing in Him, has eternal life. And, uh, of course, the corollary would also be true that everybody who does not have personal faith in Jesus Christ does not have eternal life. And the, uh, uh, the life, our existence, does not terminate at the cessation of the function of the body, or what we call death. Um, the Bible speaks uh, very clearly, and there's a lot of other evidence, that uh, no uh, life somehow just begins when we leave this body, this temple of clay, this temporary dwelling, and enter into our permanent residence, wherever that might be. And so, uh, we sense a, a responsibility to take this good news to those who need to hear it. And it's not difficult. Very often I will uh, engage a, a waiter or a waitress or somebody who serves that uh, in a very pleasant way, I would just say, you know, if you were to die, do you know you'd go to heaven or something of that nature? And they can answer that question by saying, you know, oh, I don't talk about uh, my personal faith. Or they might say, uh, I, uh, I don't know, which is the most common response, unless a person truly uh, knows and they would say, yes, I'm absolutely sure I'm going to heaven. Then you ask them the question, well, uh, how do you know that? And if they'd say, my good outweighs my bad, well, the good is not enough to outweigh the bad. Uh, or if they say, you know, I go to church or my grandfather was a preacher or something like that. You know, that that's nice, but that's not the basis on which a person can receive assurance of salvation. The only way we can know is by the truth of the written Word of God, the Scriptures. And so today we look at one Scripture, and it's the first epistle of John, not the Gospel, the first epistle of John, uh, that's the John, first John, uh, chapter 5, verse 13. Now, uh, chapter 12 says, He that has the Son has life, and he that does not have the Son does not have life. And then it goes on, and John, this is the Apostle John, and if anybody knows who has eternal life, he sure does as a uh, apostle, on a disciple and then an apostle of Jesus Christ, he would know. And so he's writing. And so he, he says, I write these things. So he's writing. To whom? He says, I'm writing these things to a certain group of people. Who? who to you who believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay, so John has taken pen in hand and he's writing to this group and the group is those who believe on the name of the Son of God. And the next question is, why is he writing? 
So he's writing to this group, why? That ye might know. So he's wanting them to know something. And so here we go. He's writing to those who believe on the name of the Son of God that they might know something. Obviously, they don't know this. Or he's assured that they don't know this and he wants them to know this something. So he's writing to those who believe on the name of the Son of God that they might know. And then he finishes it by telling us what he wants them to know. I write these things to you who believe on the Son of God that you might know, and here it is, that you have eternal life. Present tense, H-A-V-E, you have eternal life. Well, wow, it seems so simple. Dear friend, there are many people in uh, our area of ministry in uh, Romania. There, Romania is 87% Orthodox. Uh, many of those people, you ask them, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Oh yes, I pray to him every day. Um, do you believe that he's, he's God the Son? Oh yes. Do you believe that he died on the cross? Yes, yes. We have Easter, we celebrate it by saying um, uh, Christus Anviat, which means Christ is alive. And so do you believe that Jesus Christ died for sins? Yes. And that he rose again from the dead? Yes. Yes, that's why we celebrate Easter. Uh, and that's what the, they say in Romania. And then I, I asked them, I says, do you know that you would go to heaven? And generally they say, I'm trying. And once they say, I'm trying, I'm trying to be good, I go to church, I give money to the church. Once they say things like that, uh, you know, you don't want to uh, criticize that because those are good things. So you say, that's, that's great. But um, I have news for you, and then you take that person uh, to uh, the different places that we've spoken about in sessions one, two, and three, John three sixteen, uh, Ephesians two eight and nine, and uh, Romans ten verse nine, or, or you could take them to First John five thirteen. And you open their Bible. Their Bible is the same. The Orthodox Bible is the same as ours uh, virtually. And you take them in, in the Romanian language, I would say, you know, John is writing, and uh, it's in the Romanian language, to those who believe on the name of the Son of God. And I ask them, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus is God's Son? Do you believe that he's the Son of God? Do you believe that he died for sinners and that he died for your sins and that he rose again from the dead? Yes, they believe that. And so John is writing to you because he's writing to those who believe on the name of the Son of God and you do that. You are a believer in Jesus Christ. And then you say that, you tell him clearly, John is writing to you because he wants you to know something. And uh, you can follow it along in their Bible that he wants you to know something. And then what is it that he wants you to know? You have eternal life. And so let me ask you on the basis of uh, what John, the Apostle John is writing here in the Bible, in Scripture, he says that he's writing to those who believe on the name of the Son of God, and you believe on the name of the Son of God. So he's writing to you in that sense. And he wants you to know something. And uh, I'd like you to know that too. And I think you would like to know that too. And what is it? That because you believe in the name of the Son of God, you have eternal life. 
And uh, sometimes it's like, um, as we say, water off a duck's back. Sometimes the light goes on. And, and they struggle with that because uh, people are taught like Santa Claus, you know, gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. It's not like that at all. The gift of God, as we'll study uh, some other time, the gift of God is eternal life. It's a gift. If you earn it, it's no longer a gift. You earn it. And the Bible is very clear that no, nobody can earn it. Nobody is good enough. You can't give enough money to the church. You can't crawl uh, yeah, and punish it. Uh, nobody is can earn it. Amen. Done. It has to be received as a gift. And that gift comes to you through and because of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Too simple? Well, the magnificent simplicity of this gift is God opening the doors of heaven as wide as he possibly can so that all believers in Jesus Christ can come in because of their faith in Jesus. What does that, that mean? That means they're trusting in Jesus that on the cross he paid for all the sin. And the Bible speaks about the precious blood of Christ. What does that mean? That means that the blood that Jesus shed while being crucified on that cross at Calvary, he bled, he suffered, he bled, he died. That shed blood, that sacrificial uh, life, uh, we call it the vicarious atoning death of Christ, the, that blood was so precious to God the Father that the shed blood of Christ was sufficient to pay for all sin of all mankind for all time. There is nobody who has sinned so greatly that the blood of Jesus Christ didn't pay entirely for it. Nobody has sinned so many times that they can't be forgiven. No, the blood of the precious blood of Jesus Christ is sufficient to pay for any and all sin of all time, of all humanity, of all nations, of all tongues, of all dialects, the precious blood of Jesus. And so we go throughout the world and we don't teach people religion. We don't teach people traditions. What we teach is the clear um, explanation in the Word of God about who has eternal life and it's very clear in John 3 16 whoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life in Ephesians 2 8 by grace you have been saved through faith that's not of your son yourself it's a gift of God and then in Romans uh, 10 and 9 uh, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe, faith, believe in thy heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Saved means you have eternal life. You're saved from eternal damnation, hell, because of your faith. By grace, you have been saved through faith. And uh, so today we do First John. It's not an isolated teaching. It's a pervasive teaching in the New Testament that through faith in Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. I hope I made that absolutely clear. And dear friend, you can go to somebody. You have the authority, the scriptural authority on these several places in scripture. John 3.16 Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, and here, 
the first uh, letter of uh, John, chapter 5, verse 13. In those several places, you can open the Bible and share freely. You have that authority to, to share these things with people. It's called personal evangelism. You don't have to bring them to church. They don't have to go on the altar. They don't even have to cry. The fact that they're reaching out for a savior means that they 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 know that they're lost. They know that they, they, they if you ask them they're going to heaven, they don't know. They they're confused. They don't know, and we have this to give them the assurance of salvation. Well, God bless you. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll be back again in uh, the next session. God bless you. My name is Pastor Roy. Goodbye for now.